Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benun. you're watching Israeli News Live. We have a very interesting prophetic broadcast this evening on our news program. Uh, those of you that will be watching here on live stream here, uh, you get to see a little bit of this up front here. First, as we go into it, it's going to be an extensive uh, broadcast tonight. Bear with me. Uh, we have two different things that are happening in uh, both in the Middle East as well as in uh, Europe that is a plan the United States is preparing to make a particular move. In doing so, I have done some research uh, from a biblical perspective to see is the United States actions actually following in a biblical pattern, and I believe that it does. Uh, let's first take a look here, this, uh, this broadcast here, and uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of that so you can hear it. Uh, this is actually uh, on Fox News, and uh, well, we'll just keep off the sound of this anyway. On Fox News is speaking here about the United States planning on sending troops into Europe uh, to beef up the presence of military presence in Europe in order to uh, kind of deter Russia from any possible aggression on Europe. Now, this is a very serious situation, to say the least, uh, of events that are going on. And I say that because uh, it's quite obvious that the United States uh, being pressured by the Vatican is putting a lot, a lot of um, uh, serious, or, or making serious steps there that, are, that is provoking Russia, to say the least. As Russia has stated, we do not have bases all over the world like the United States does. We only have two bases abroad, now three, one in Syria now at the request of Basar al-Assad. Uh, he has a base there as well that they have constructed. But the U.S. does have bases all around the world. In fact, today I was looking at maps uh, specifically because of a prophetic insight that I'm going to share with you. But I was looking at maps of bases of the United States around the world. It is alarming. It is staggering the number of bases. No wonder why Iraq is not very crazy about the United States. And of course, I'm not, or not Iraq, but Iran. And I'm not very crazy about Iran either. But nonetheless, when your country is totally surrounded by military uh, that, that, is a, that is against you as well as you are against them, it makes things pretty tough. And of course, we don't have Iranian bases surrounding the United States, neither do we have Russian bases surrounding the United States. But the United States has certainly surrounded Russia. They have surrounded uh, Iran. Many of the nations that, uh, that are considered the enemies of the United States have been surrounded by the United States with military bases uh, to where they could easily attack any country at any given time whatsoever. Now, I say these things because they may not seem like a big big deal, especially if you're an American, but uh, we have to understand if we do aggressive posturing, uh, it's certainly going to backfire on us in the long run. And Russia, although they may not have bases all over the world, they've got some pretty powerful uh, abilities to say the very least. And Russia has always said that it would re uh, revert to nuclear weapons if they felt like they could not win in a conventional war. Well, that's almost a given then, especially with the United States surrounding Russia uh, with military bases, troops, everything else. It's going to make a situation where Russia no doubt may use nuclear force in the long run there. Let me take you real quick though also here. I've got some different um, Another article as well here, this was on RT News. It came out today, U.S. needs boots on the ground to occupy and govern Syrian, Syrian territories, Air Force Secretary has now stated here. Uh, that's a very serious situation as well. Uh, Russia already is there, uh, has their uh, military there. Mainly Russia has not so much ground troops, although they do have advisors there. Uh, it may be more than what we realize, but they have a huge air force in uh, Syria there bombing and taking out ISIS as well as some of the U.S.-backed uh, militants that are against uh, 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 the President Basar al-Assad in the region there. So now the U.S., after they sent 50 special force troops, we had mentioned this a few days ago in one of our, uh, our broadcasts there on Israeli News Live, we also said that uh, no doubt this is only the beginning of it, that the U.S. would send in troops, and now they're calling on it. And, uh, and clearly the reason being is, is the U.S. does not want to lose control of this area to Russia. 
uh, and you're going to find out the U.S. actually has a huge control of all this area to begin with. So Russia really is just a small uh, a prick there with a pin compared to what the U.S. has on the ground there in this area. It says Washington needs boots on the ground in Syria in addition to its air campaign against ISIS, which is not fruitful despite some progress, U.S. Air Force Secretary has admitted that ground forces it must in order to occupy and govern parts of Syria. Looks like they're planning on doing Syria, much like uh, Russia and, and the United States when they were allies in the Second World War did with Germany. They split the country in half. Now, is it a plan maybe that the U.S. and Russia are going to divide Syria? I don't know if that's really going to be the case unless they are acting together uh, secretly, but it doesn't really look that way. It doesn't seem that Russia really wants to be a game player in all of this. Uh, anyway, it says in her, or excuse me, in her comment, Secretary Deborah Lee James stressed the importance of a U.S.-led air campaign, but admitted that airstrikes need to be backed by ground forces. Looks like Obama is busy with his people building up a case for ground forces in Syria. Uh, air power is extremely important. It cannot do a lot, but it can do it. It can't do everything. James said just two days after Secretary of Defense Ash Carter supported President Obama's willingness to do more in terms of U.S. troops on the ground in, uh, or excuse me, on Syrian ground. Ultimately, it cannot occupy territory, and very importantly, it cannot govern territory. James told reporters at the Dubai Air Show. This is where we need to have boots on the ground. We, need, we do need to have ground forces in this campaign. When it comes to support, the U.S. should assist the Iraqi army, the Free, Syrian, the Free Syrians, uh, and the Kurds in the fight against the Islamic State, uh, IS, uh, IS, IS, also known as ISIS or ISIL, James said, joined at the news conference by the head of Air Force Central Commander Lieutenant General Charles Q. Brown, Jr., the civilian chief of the U.S. Air Force, also said, uh, that the U.S. sought to speed up the, the, the resupply of munitions uh, used by its allies in the campaigns against IS militants in Syria and Iraq there. Uh, from what I can tell this far, Russia's been doing a, a very good job on their own taking out ISIS. I don't think that even the U.S. is really needed at this point. They've done more just in the last couple of months than the U.S. has done in the last uh, year, year and a half uh, with its little campaigns. And as we said the other day, France now, they're trying to cover their tracks because the U.S., the U.K. have turned a blind eye while uh, the, the oil that was being stolen by ISIS was being sold on the black market. And of course, we've, we saw some of the articles that suggest that Germany, uh, as well as France, were, were, were buying in this oil as the U.S. just kind of turned a blind eye on who was buying it. Of course, it's being paid cash, and you've got to be a pretty hefty partner to be able to pay out the millions of dollars that they want, even at a lower cost of $20 to $15 a barrel. Uh, so a lot of profiteering has been going on in this, needless to say, and they do want to get full control of these areas, but they also wanted to buy it while they could. So France decided to take out its, uh, its suppliers so that they can't speak about anything later down the road by bombing the facilities as well. All right, let's take a look at the scriptural side of this, though, because I really wanted to see, is there a, a scriptural uh, backing with the U.S. looking at putting troops on the ground in Syria. And there is. There is a definitely a scriptural backing. It also identifies who the chief guy is in the background. It, again, accuses the Pope of Rome as being the ringleader. The U.S. is clearly, uh, the U.S. is definitely clearly the modern-day Chaldeans, uh, which is an arm of the Babylonian Empire, in this case here, Mystery Babylon, which is none other than the Vatican. One of the reasons why I believe that the scripture in, in, in Revelation speaks of it as Mystery Babylon is because not many people really know that it is the Roman Empire, the Babylonian modern-day uh, Mystery Babylon, that is controlling the United Nations military powers of the world. But yes, it is especially when they claim to be the head of all political powers globally, as well as all spiritual powers. So who do you think is controlling the strings of the United States, the UK, and other NATO allies, France, Germany, uh, Turkey even, for that matter? Okay, so let's take a look at the book of Habakkuk. Uh, and it's actually the first two chapters here that clearly define what is happening. And we're going to also look at a couple other places as well 
in the process. It says, The burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see, uh, O Lord, how long shall I cry and, and will not hear, even cry out and unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save? Why dost thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance, or spoiling of violence? And before me, and there are that raise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth, for the wicked doth come, come pass about. Now we're going to find out a little bit later in Habakkuk here that God does tell them this is for a future generation. Keep that in mind. The righteous, therefore, wrong judgment proceedeth. Now God does give a reply here. Verse 5, chapter 1 of Habakkuk. Behold ye among the heathen, and regard and wonder marvelously. For I will work a work in your days which you will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. Okay? They are terrible and dreadful, their judgment and their dignity, and shall proceed of themselves. Their horses also are swifter than the leopards and are more fierce than the evening wolves, and their horsemen shall spread themselves, and their horsemen shall come from far. They shall fly as the eagle they hasteth to eat. They shall come all for violence. Their faces shall sup up as the east wind, and they shall gather the captivity as the sand, and they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them, and they shall deride every stronghold, for they shall heap dust and take it. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over, uh, offend, imputing this his power unto his God. Okay, his power unto his God. Well, his God, remember, I read to you a little interesting prophecy there not too long ago about that they would have a strange God that they would, that they would look unto, to, that would rule in his name. That is in the, uh, what is considered an apocryphal book there of Yeshua. The humane gospel of Yeshua does speak about that. But notice here, though, Habakkuk speaks about they will look unto his God, a little G-O-D. And that God that the United States looks at is none other than the Pope of Rome. What did George Bush Jr. say, the president of the United States, the former president of the United States, when he was during an interview, they asked him, this is about Pope Benedict, no less. And of course, Pope Benedict, I don't know how in the world he could have ever said this about him. I mean, that man looks like a devil to begin with. But the Pope, or excuse me, George Bush was asked uh, by the interviewer, what do you see when you look into the eyes of uh, the Pope? And he said unequivocally, I see God. Now, let me, this is really important that we take the time to look at this one particular video here. I've, I've, you need to hear what the interviewer asked President Bush and what he says, because this is biblical prophecy. Question, sir. You said famously, when you looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes, you saw his soul. Yeah. When you look into Benedict XVI's eyes, what do you see? God. Good did, way to end the interview. Did you hear it? Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Okay. You said He could see the soul of Vladimir Putin. And he says, God. When he looks in Pope Benedict XVI's eyes, what do you see? God. Now watch what it says here. Then shall his mind change, and he shall pass over and offend, imputing this his power unto his God. Oh my gosh. Friends, do you not realize? I mean, th th this is unbelievable. Unbelievable the things that are happening here. Now, let's take a look at this now. The Chaldeans, and by the way, the Chaldeans are an arm of the Roman Empire. I want to share with you something here that is very fascinating to say the least. This here is a map during the biblical times BC, probably about 500 years or so BC. You see the Euphrates rivers. You see Chaldea here in the bottom of your screen right there near the Persian Gulf. Now, that's actually where Kuwait is right there, okay? And the new Babylonian Empire way up there in the, in the, uh, the, or the Persian Empire there, this was, uh, the, the, the Chaldeans 
worked hand in hand with the Babylonians, okay? The Babylon Empire. Now we have today Mystery Babylon, which is Rome, all the way over, of course, into Italy. And the Roman Empire has been reestablished, revived. But notice where Chaldea, all the yellow area with the Roman Empire, or the Babylonian Empire, we see, and the, well, like I said, remember the Roman Empire is Mystery Babylon. Don't forget that Mystery Babylon there. But this is the area of control. Now, how do we identify the United States as Chaldean or the army of the Mystery Babylon of today? Let's take a look at another map right here. This is a U.S. military map, the same identical region you just looked at. The yellow stars there are military bases right down here where the Chaldeans lived at from Baghdad, and, and, and from, uh, Baghdad further south, Kuwait, all that. The United States has six military bases. There's actually more than this. This is an older map right here. Uh, but they go all the way up uh, up there in the northern Iraq, uh, two or three more bases also in southern Iraq, another base in southern Turkey. They have several bases there surrounding Syria, all the area there. And, and the map is not, I'm not even showing you this on the map. Of course, uh, Iran is totally surrounded by military bases around Afghanistan uh, and, and Pakistan and all those regions there, uh, all over southern Russia's borders into Europe, etc., all these places here. But I wanted to establish for you, I want you to see this, how that the U.S. and also in line with Chaldea, the military bases follow the same exact pattern of where Chaldea was in ancient times before uh, the coming of Yeshua did, okay? So that's just to kind of set that stage there for you and so that you know God is raising him up. He comes in. Now notice what he does. He's got all these courses. Let's go to verse 12 in Habakkuk chapter 1. Art thou not from the everlasting, O Lord my God? Now this is Habakkuk speaking back to the Lord. My holy one, we shall not die, O Lord. Thou hast ordained them for judgment, and O mighty God, thou hast established them for correction. Thou art pure eyes than to behold evil, and canst not look on iniquity. Wherefore lookest thou upon them that deal treacherously, and holdest thy tongue? Tongue, when the wickedness devour the man and that is that is more righteous than he you see they dealt treacherously remember what what God said about Israel she had dealt treacherously with the Lord thy God now this is why he says they have dealt treacherously because why the United States claims to be a Christian nation and are dealing treacherously with God and destroying people. You know, the one thing, even Putin actually went down to try to rescue some of the Christian believers down in, in, in Syria in this area here. Now, I, I realize maybe these are Catholic people, but the, nonetheless, these people are willing to die for the name of Jesus Christ. And I have a respect for anyone that is willing to lose his own life and, and his head for that name. That is a wonderful thing. Regardless, I mean, not a wonderful thing that they lose their life, but still, blessed are the, are the death of his saints in, in his sight, okay? So anyway, <clears throat> so we go on now, verse 13, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, and by the way, that, that, when I speak about dealing treacherously, that is in Hosea uh, chapter 6, uh, verse 7 there. <clears throat> excuse me, I started to choke up there a little bit. Verse 14, and makest men as the fishes of the sea, as the creeping things that have no ruler over them. Watch how this turns out here. They take up all of them with the angle. They catch them in their net and gather them in their drag. Therefore, they rejoice and are glad. Therefore, they sacrifice. Um, lost my place there. Uh, Back up. Therefore, okay, they, therefore, verse 16, therefore they sacrifice into their net and burn incense into their drag because by them their portion is fat and their meat plenteous. Fascinating, isn't it? Do you realize what he's speaking about right there? They take them up in the net. What, what is, the, the Pope of Rome claims to be a successor of Peter. Because you've got to remember, they are working in harmony together. And I'm going to show you this in just a moment. We'll go to another place in Scripture to see the, uh, who they're actually working with. One reason why God is identifying who they are, what they're doing here. The net itself shows that they are fishermen. Fishermen of what? Fisher of men. But in this case here, they're doing it in an evil way. Did not Yeshua say in the humane gospel as well that they would take in the latter days for greed. They would gather lands and riches unto themselves. 
okay? That's what he says there, right? Now, and what does it say right here? That they would actually take and catch them in their net, see, and gather them. Uh, and their portion is fat and their meat is plenteous. In other words, they don't need to be doing this. They've already got what they're well to do. The Vatican's well to do and so is the United States well to do. But they're catching fish. See, Peter, God came to him, Yeshua came to him and says, follow thou me and be a fisher of men. He had him forsake what he was doing, the fishing, fishing of the fish of the sea, and to come be a fisher of men. This case here, it is showing you a biblical sign to look for, to know how you know who they are. They're fishers of men, but they're doing it against God's way of doing it. And of course, the Pope runs around with his little hat on of the fish god that he serves, Dagon, the fish god. You know, but he's claiming to take the place of Peter, the one that was called away from the fishing and to be a fisher of men. And yes, they are fishing for men, aren't they? All right, now let's see what else it says here. Verse 17, shall they therefore empty their net and not spare continually to slay the nations? You see, the, the Pope of Rome has got his hand on the United Nations. He controls the UN. I had a friend of mine that was on the World Bank system, and he said that they always have a Vatican representative at every World Bank meeting. That's fact. The United Nations, the Pope of Rome, they're all represented there. They control these things. They come over there, they, he speaks, and all the, all the world dignitaries go to him. Everybody that's part of the United Nations go to the Pope of Rome. I can promise you that. And even ones that are not part of the United Nations go to the Pope of Rome. He's controlling the world. He has both political and spiritual powers. At least that's what he claims. Now, for chapter 2, I will stand upon, all right, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon thy tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that, tread, that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall, it, sh it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. But the just shall live by his faith. All right? Now, I do know that in the book of Romans, this is actually quoted by Paul, as well as in the book of Hebrews. All right? Now, so could the just shall live by his faith, is, is that should be speaking of the coming of Christ. But notice, behold, his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him. See? But the United States, President Bush has already said, when he looks in Pope Benedict's eyes, he says, I see God. Or just flat out says, God. They ask him, what do you see when you look in the eyes of Benedict XVI? God. But the just doesn't look at the Pope of Rome as their God. They look at Yeshua to be their God, okay? Now, it is for an appointed time. It is a future event, which we are now living in that time frame, okay? Yea, also because the transgression, yea, yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell and is a death and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all the nations and heapeth unto him all the people. All right? This is how you also know that Rome's hand is involved in this. He gathers to himself the nations. Well, the United States doesn't gather the nations. The United States topples nations and takes over them. But the Pope of Rome actually gathers the nations for himself and makes them become under his rule and under his control. You understand? Now notice also, it says something here very interesting. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine. Obadiah, do you remember that famous verse in Obadiah when I shared with you how Obadiah chapter 16 was fulfilled recently back in uh, Passover of 2014? For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. They, thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, see, and that's masculine plural in the Hebrew, all right, men only are going to be drinking at that one. 
Then what does it say in the rest of it? So shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though they had not been. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance and there shall be the holiness in the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions. See, the Pope of Rome, God gives you in Habakkuk a, a, a clear sign to know who he is, who the leader of these Chaldeans are. It's the Pope of Rome because he says right here, yea, also because he transgresseth by wine. He transgressed against the God of Israel when he came and he drank on the holy mountain of God in Obadiah. He gives you the clear prophecy to know who he is. It's the Pope of Rome that did it. Men only took, partook of that communion service that day. And it was the Pope that led the service. Passover 2014. So he gives you a sign to know who the leader is. But the just shall live by, shall live by faith. All right? Not by the faith of this backslidden pontiff, Pope Francis. Verse 6, shall not all these take up a parable against him and a, and a taunting and a proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long and to him that ladeth himself with thick clay shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee and awake that shall vex thee and thou shalt be for booties unto them because thou hast said spoiled and because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of thy people shall spoil thee because of the men's blood, for the violence of the land, of the city, and of all that dwell therein. Woe to him that coveteth an, uh, uh, an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house, uh, consult, yeah, and by cutting off many people and has sinned against thy soul, for the stone shall, care, shall cry out on the wall and the beam of the, of the timber shall answer it. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood and establish a city with iniquity. All right? Now, let's drop down. No, let me go further. Behold, it is not the Lord of hosts that the people shall labor in the very fire, and the people shall weary themselves for, for very vanity. For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, and the waters cover the sea. This will be because also the two witnesses are on the scene at the same time, or coming up at the, about the same time. One to him that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him. Now let's drop down to verse 18. What profiteth the graven images that the maker thereof hath graven, it molten image and the teacher of lies that, may, that maker his works trusted therein to make dumb idols. Woe unto him that saith to the wood, Awake to thy dumb stone, arise, it shall teach. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, and there is no breath in it at all in the midst of it. But the Lord is, his holy is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. You know, the Lord is in His holy temple. Friends, that's not going to be the temple that they build there in Jerusalem next to the Dome of the Rock. We are the temple. Remember, I gave you that sign of Jonah not too long ago. The sign of Jonah in modern days will be Christ inside the two witnesses. Okay, now, let's go real quick. I need to take you over to the book of Jeremiah chapter 51. I've said before, people have asked me, what have I thought about Jeremiah 51? Is, uh, is Babylon the United States? Babylon and the Chaldeans work together, mystery Babylon. And so yes, in uh, Jeremiah chapter 51, both the United States and uh, Rome are both mentioned here simultaneously in the events that happen. Let's read starting with verse 24. And I will render into Babylon and all the inhabitants of the Chaldea all their evil that they have done in Zion in, your, in the sight, in your sight, saith the Lord. So see, it's not just Babylon, but it's the Chaldeans. The Chaldeans is the United States. It's the arm of Rome. It may also fall under the UK. It may also fall under others as well that are part of the United Nations force. But the U.S. is definitely the chief arm of this, of this particular uh, scripture here. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord, which destroyer 
all the earth, and I will stretch out mine hand upon thee, and roll thee down from the rocks, and will make thee a burnt mountain, and they shall not take uh, of of thee a stone for a corner, nor a stone for the foundation, but thou shalt be desolate forever, saith the Lord. Set up you a standard in the land, blow the trumpet among the nations, prepare the nations against her, call together against her the kingdoms of, uh, of Arat, Menini, and Ashkenaz, the appoint captain against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and, uh, and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon, to make the land of Babylon a desolation without any inhabitant. Okay? The mighty men of Babylon have, uh, have uh, forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. Their might hath Failed. They became as women. They have burned her dwelling places. Her bars her, her, are broken. One post shall run to meet another, and, and one messenger to meet another to shew the king of Babylon that his city is taken at, at one end. See? The king of Babylon, Pope of Rome. And that the passages are stopped, and the reeds they have burned with fire, and the men of war are affrighted. Affrighted. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her, yet a little while in the time of her harvest shall come. Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicates, and he hath cast me out. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon, shall the inhabitants of Zion say. The violence done to Israel. They blame Rome, Edom, for the violence that is done to Israel. And I clearly have been joining into that as well. All these Arabic nations that are rising up against, the, against Israel right now, Hezbollah, Syria, Iran, Egypt, Jordan, all these countries are ruled in their, 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 their it is... The Babylonian king today, Mystery Babylon, the Pope of Rome, that has incited the violence against Israel in the West Bank. And, and it's not just myself that speaks this. This is spoken by Guglielm Miotti. It's spoken by, by uh, Barry Chamish. It's spoken by, there's, a, there's a, a Jewish woman there, a, a journalist in Israel that has also spoken out against Rome. All of them crying out, even the Jews today know that it's Rome. Mystery Babylon that is against Israel. All right? So that scripture is so true. The violence done to me and to my flesh be upon Babylon. The Intifada, as I said, incited by Rome. All right? Shall the inhabitants of Zion say, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. Why Chaldea? Why Jerusalem? Because the United States has been the key one in dividing the city of Jerusalem. John Kerry, who has led the campaign, and now once again, Barack Obama, along with Prime Minister Netanyahu, are working to divide Jerusalem. So the blood... See, let me read that one more time there, just in closing here on this broadcast. See? He says right here, Blood uh, and, and my blood upon the inhabitants of Chaldea shall Jerusalem say. Friends, prophecy, once again, is being fulfilled in an enormous fashion. We need to be in prayer like no other time in the history of the world. No other time. We are about to see wars break out like never before. God is going to bring a judgment on the Chaldeans, on the Babylonian Empire that is ruled by Rome. You know, I read one place there in Jeremiah 51 where it speaks about waves will compass her. Is it going to be tidal waves? My wife, along with many others that have seen visions of this, 
She becomes desolate or will it be something else? You know, it's kind of interesting. Just as all the Israel's enemies have been using the Intifada to draw Israel's forces away from their borders and to put them within different parts of the cities there to protect the citizens, now, right now the United States is also falling for a similar scheme. They're going to send their troops to Syria, to Europe, beef up all these places here. It'll make it much easier for Russia to sweep in through the north, won't it? We're living in serious times, friends. You know, there's one other place, too. It says that they scoff. I didn't mention that to you. Let me just real quick. This is also in Habakkuk. And I don't want you to miss this part right here. In the book of Habakkuk, one of the things that he says here in verse 10, chapter 1, And they shall scoff at the kings, and the princes shall be a scorn unto them. You know, I started looking some of this up, and I was amazed at... There's so many you can't even get them all in here. But I put some of them up here for you. Obama scoffs at Ahmadinejad's demand for an apology was one. Bush scoffs uh, at the quote of brutal regimes uh, and quote uh, U.S. President uh, George W. Bush rallied fellow U.N. members to what he called a mission of liberation and named Belarus, Syria, Iran, and North Korea as brutal regimes, scoffing at all the people there in the Middle East. Uh, Bush scoffs at Saddam, uh, Saddam's denial of banned weapons program. You see, all the Chaldeans, presidents, have scoffed at everybody in the world. As if we are invincible. You know, the United States, if it had truly stayed a nation that believed in her Messiah, Yeshua, and had gone by the laws that he had given. John speaks about it in, 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 in the Gospel of John when he says, keeping the Lord's commandments. Had we, did, had we done this, we would not be the nation we are today. We would not be there working for Rome, trying to take over the world for Rome. But unfortunately, my own fellow Americans, judgment is at hand. We can only look to our Maker and truly draw as close to Him as we possibly can or be consumed with our nation and its sins. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.